What's up, survivors? Hit the subscribe button if you never thought you had a big enough knife. Let's go over all the different considerations that we want to look for in a survival knife or whatever knife you're just going to buy. Well, welcome to my office. Time to lock it up. Let's get to knives. First off, let me preface it. When we're in a survival situation, any piece of steel is better than doing this. A rock and trying to make a knife out of it. Anything you have is gonna be better. So let's go over some advantages and disadvantages of these different types of blades that we have here. Now when you look at a blade, you have the butt cap or butt plate, you have the handle, the bolster material in the front here, so our finger guard, the spine, the bevel, which is the edge that's sharpened, and also how it's ground in there. So there's a lot of different things that go into this knife here. So for survival, like I said, anyone that you have is awesome. We'll get to my favorite one down towards the end. When you look at different machetes, different bolos that you have, the thickness of the spine is important on there, the comfortableness of the handle, because when you're chopping on something, it can vibrate into your hand a whole bunch. So if you have an uncomfortable handle, which I've had, you just don't want to use it. And there's different designs. This is more of a kukri design, get more of the weight forward and down, which helps with chopping. This is an Ontario knife, thicker, and the way this handle, it seems comfortable, but it really vibrates a lot. I don't like this knife. I don't like the tip of it, but this one, as far as Bolo goes, it is my least favorite. I barely use it. Now we have the Unglis from SE Knives right here. Comfortable handle, good spine thickness, a slight drop point in the tip, and overall a pretty good profile. Just a joy to use. Now this Benchmade 153 that we have right here. You can see that the blade on here is right about the same thickness. Maybe slightly thicker than the Unglis, but it's a lot shorter. Has more of that drop point design. Now this is a great little knife. It's a nice step up from other different types if you want kind of a chopper. But really as far as chopping goes, it doesn't perform the way I'd want it. As far as if I want to chop down little trees, just takes more swipes than something heavier like this or like this. So this is a good knife. I really don't like it that much though. Now we have a couple Benchmades, a couple different designs. This one I like better than this knife. Now the blade is kind of thin. They're both pretty light. All, overall good knives, but I don't really like the way that they sharpen, the way that they hold an edge. And a lot of guys had this knife and the tip would break off frequently with this one. This one is an Ontario knife, a bolt knife. Real strong, real sturdy design. And that's what we use for survival training. Well, but this is what we used to use. Back when I was in the Air Force, this old bolt knife, and they called it a bolt because you could screw on the end. And then there's just a thinner piece of steel inside this handle material. So it's not a full tang. A full tang would be the steel is the same thickness the whole way through the handle. And this is definitely is not. And when we would do the beater stick method, and we would have another piece of wood and pound down through, these would always bend. They would turn into boomerangs, as we would call them. They would eventually always break. And so we used them for years until we found something better, which is this one, real sturdy, real solid. I haven't seen one bend yet. Here's a knife I made, oh, 20 years ago. I have a drop point hunter style design. Big brass caps on here, it's pretty heavy. And overall, 
I like it. It's comfortable. I could have more of a rounder handle, you have an ebony wood. But when you have a drop point design, if it's too drastic, like one of the Benchmade Bushcraft knives, I don't like how drastic or how it drops off at the tip right here, the drop point. So as you're doing the beater stick method, a lot of times your wood will just want to slip off the end of it. So having a little bit of a tip here really helps out there. And like I was saying with this one, this one has an additional feature which is a gut hook or works well when you're skinning up the legs of an animal so it doesn't cut into the meat. Has a hollow grind on the inside here so it's nice and hollow. As well as this nice finger guard so if your hands are slippery and wet that your finger doesn't want to slip up. That is a major consideration when I'm looking for a survival knife. This Mora knife, one of my favorites, real sturdy in a way if you buy this thicker one right here. Some of them have thinner steel, this one's a little bit thicker. And I always buy a Mora knife with a finger guard. Most of them don't have it. So have, buy one with a finger guard so when you're grabbing a piece of wood, going up and then stabbing down through and twisting, then your hand doesn't want to slide down. So I've seen it happen two or three times where guys' hands would slip down through and then they cut their fingers right here. And then they'd be out for two or three months until their hand healed up. So I always find a knife for survival, I believe, with a good finger guard. You can see this one has good finger guard. This one at least has one. Some of them are real thin. And minuscule. You can see most of the ones that I have do not have that that feature where there is no finger guard. The different grinds that we have is a Scandi grind which is where the bevel goes up a ways up to steel here and then you, when you sharpen it on a sharpening stone you can put that whole bevel right on there. Check out the sharpening video if you want to check out some different considerations and how I sharpen knives. I like the Scandi grind for bushcraft type stuff. It just seems to cut a lot better than this knife right here. This knife definitely cuts better than this hundred and something dollar knife versus this fifteen dollar one. And just those considerations there really help out. Now this one you have a flat grind, it's just flat all the way down. And on this one it's a hollow grind. So it's pretty thin down towards the bottom. So it's going to shave a lot better, but it's going to be a little bit more brittle, not going to be as durable as a flat grind. But all in all, if you're careful enough, a hollow grind will last you just fine on there. Now on these Mora knives, it is a hidden tang on the inside, but still it's really tough to pound through and bend these like a boomerang. It's tough to bend these. I haven't done that. I've only bent them like this. Only bent them like that. I like the weight of these. They're not too heavy. Doesn't feel like a burden to carry around. Some knives have a little groove right here. A little spot to put your finger. So more of a fine motor skill type stuff. Usually I don't use that. So I try and avoid it somewhat. But it can be handy for certain amounts of things. This Gerber, pretty comfortable handle. Overall, decent knife. And then you have your Leatherman's right here. The main Leatherman that I've used for years right here is this Leatherman Wave. And I keep a metal match in there. And I like to put a little lanyard on the side so it's easy to pull out of my sheath. And you have a couple different ones, the serrated blade and just a normal blade right here. This will work. This will work for a lot of your tasks. But you have to be real careful when you're trying to beat or stick through this one because this blade lock, if you press in on it inadvertently, it can fold in on your finger. Or a lot of times it's the shock of it will jar that loose and it'll, as you're going through the wood, it'll do this. Now, I've seen a lot of guys use the saw and try and make a spark with it. And what you're looking for is a nice 90 degree edge. You grab your ferro rod or metal match to make those sparks. But I've seen it on three or four guys where they're sparking it, going hard, and then their hand will push in on this, and then it'll go in on their finger, and then they cut it and usually be out for about a month. So what I would do, when I do in all my Leathermans, is just take a file, 
sharpen this down right here to a nice 90 degrees. So I put the file down, sharpen it 90 degrees, maybe a little bit here. And then that makes a nice sharp spark and it's not dulling your blade and it's safe too. This is other Leathermans that you have. I love carrying around Leathermans. And then the other consideration are the no handle knives. The no handle ones. Usually you put a, a piece of cordage around it, 550 cord to make it a little bit more comfortable. But I do not like knives like this. They're just not comfortable to use for long amounts of time. If you're using a knife for even an hour and it's a little bit uncomfortable, it's gonna become way more uncomfortable the more you use it. So I hate trying to carve with a Leatherman because it's so uncomfortable. I usually just carry around the Mora knife. Extremely comfortable, round, good to use. Folding knives, open them with two hands, close them with two hands for safety. Considerations, yeah, it could close in on you if you're trying to pry, so you want to be careful there. But they have a thinner grind, a thinner bevel, which makes them easier for carving in fine tasks or skinning. I'd much rather skin with this little knife here than with the unglas. Now what is my favorite knives here? It would have to be these two. The Mora knife and the unglas. Now you can chop, do a whole bunch of things with this. You can still do fine carving if you hold on to it towards the front and then you can carve that way. You can hold it backwards and carve away. A lot of times if you just hold a stick and then hold this steady and then pull the stick instead of the knife. You can also put it on your an object or your knee and then carve with the stick, holding it steady. You get a lot of power that way. So I really like this one. And if I would just have one knife here, it would be this one. Because I can chop, do a whole bunch of things. And I can still do fine stuff with it, no problem. The most favorite knife I have here would be this Mora knife. Great little survival knife. Nice easy plastic sheath to go in and out of. My favorite sheath in here would be this Kydex one. So it goes in and out, real secure. You can adjust the Kydex sheath. You can loosen this up, bring it up here so it makes it tough to take out, but I just keep it all the way loose. If I want it secure, I snap this when I'm walking around. I changed this snap out to just a normal snap. The one that was on there was almost, was too stiff. So I changed that out. The only downside to Kydex in blades like this is they hold moisture. So even just a few hours, a lot of times in the winter or rain, this edge will start to rust on you. So don't leave it in the sheath overnight. So liking, comment. I love seeing those comments. I like seeing what knives are your favorite. I would love to hear. There's so many different good bushcraft knives out there that I've used that I don't even have here. This that I've used of other guys' knives. There's so many that are out there. A knife is a knife. Just look for the safety features, the bolster, the finger guards are one of my most important safety features that I look for when I'm trying to beat or stick through wood. We'll see you in the next one. Keep surviving. Woo! Glory days forever! Yeah, yeah. <laughs>